internationally certified counselor. I have been working in the counseling field for about eight years. Um, for four years prior to this position, I worked at a residential psychiatric treatment facility in the Atlanta area for children, adolescents, and young adults. Um, and this facility often, um, they were mandated to come due to um, a serious threat to hurt themselves or hurt someone else. A lot of them had endured severe abuse, um, physical, sexual, or emotional, and also severe neglect. Um, so I have lots of experience working with adolescents who have experienced traumatic experiences at an early age. And uh, what are some causes, common causes that people undermine? Um, for PTSD? PTSD. Yes. Um, trauma in itself is defined as an event that occurs that um, presents the person with threatened or actual um, death. And so a lot of times we as a culture and society don't recognize all the things that can occur as a trauma that can lead to PTSD. Hey, um, I'm Nate and I'm here with Cameron today. He um, suffers from PTSD and today I'm going to ask him a few questions. So what caused your PTSD? Like how did you suffer from it? Well, uh, February 21st, 2013, um, I went in to have a routine surgical procedure to get a uh, what's called a gastrojejunal tube put in. It's a feeding tube um, and uh, it's, a, it's a blind procedure. They put you under a fluoroscopy which is basically a moving x-ray. Um, they give you a little bit of pain medicine um, and it turned out that uh, there's, a, there's a balloon that holds the feeding tube in place so that it doesn't just fall out um, and that balloon had ruptured through my stomach. Um, and it uh, created that big of a hole four inches. Mm. Um, and so I was bleeding internally. Uh, what are the major symptoms of PTSD? So PTSD, um, people can commonly have um, flashbacks of the event, um, mm -hmm. and it can be triggered by multiple things. The highest sensory trigger is the smell, mm -hmm. um, because it's connected oh, to the amygdala, yeah. um, which is in the brain. Um, like an almond shaped cluster that holds the sensory memory um, the strongest and then your other senses. Um, another thing is dreams of the event and nightmares mm -hmm. are common. Um, avoidance of cues of the situation. Mm -hmm. For example, if something happened in the alley, that person may avoid going to that alley. Um, what are the um, after effects of the symptoms now? Like, you have anxiety. Yeah, a lot of anxiety. Um, I constantly think about um, bad things happening to me. Um, I'm very grateful that I lived, but at the same time, it's it's hard to live knowing that they could have done so many things for me. Um, they could have prevented. But just being in a room that resembled the one where they almost killed me, was so scary. I was so, I was so freaked out. Um, I was like, what, what if something goes wrong? Um, I don't ever want to have that happen. Again. What do you think friends and family members of a PTSD sufferer should do to help their loved one? There are a lot of things um, that family and friends could do. I mean, the most important one, of course, is sometimes just being there. Um, not stigmatizing the issues that they're already dealing with because I think it's a cultural issue for us to uh, typically stigmatize that people are or label them as crazy versus seeing what's going on underneath that behavior. Mm -hmm. um, mental health is important. Mental health enhances physical health. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for one just to help decrease the stigma related to mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, the second thing is to encourage them to go to counseling um, and get resources that can help them dealing with the PTSD um, because it's a serious illness that affects so many of us and I think a lot of times we don't get the treatment we need because of the stigma associated with it. What steps are you taking now to help alleviate the symptoms? Um, I talk about what happened to me a lot. Um, I go to therapy. Um, and I spent 
I spent months um, right after the surgery just talking about what happened and processing everything that happened to me because it was it, was, it only happened in, in a 12 day period and um, it seemed to go on for months or years mm -hmm. even. If someone um, is related to or knows someone who suffers from PTSD what advice would you give them to help them suffer? Talk about it thing you can do is talk about it. Um, it might seem easier to just pretend like it never happened, but pretending is worse than remembering. As hard as remembering what happened is, and it's extremely hard to think about, because um, a lot of the time you remember exactly what happened. Um, and I remember every second of that 12 days. Um, I don't remember some of what happened that first night, but I was, I was really, really sick. Um, and then what should the people around them do to help? I guess let them talk about it when they're ready. Uh, you don't want to force someone to talk about it if they're not ready. I can make things worse. However, if it's been a really long time and they're not talking about it, you need to make them talk about it. Um, but if it's just happened and they're not willing to talk about it, don't make them. Because um, you'll, you'll make them not want to talk about it and then that'll just be so much worse for them. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're still here and um, thanks for um, helping. Do you have any insight on the topic in itself that you might want to add? I am very ecstatic that you are doing this topic. I think Thank it's you. awesome. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. um, I worked near and dear, and I love mm -hmm. working with those adolescents at the hospital. I think they are a highly overlooked population, right. um, and that's what saddens me. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm very glad that you're bringing some awareness to this topic. It's definitely yeah. changing. Okay. You don't realize how fragile life is until you almost lose.